Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at creating these awesome fiery titles inside of Vegas Pro with BCC Reflection, Particle Illusion, and Title Studio, all part of Continuum 2020. Okay, so here we are in Vegas, and I've begun by importing a clip of some flames. Now to create this effect, we're going to be using a couple of different effects, the first of which being Title Studio. Whenever we work with Title Studio, the first thing we want to do is duplicate our video track. The reason for this is because Title Studio will always replace the track it's applied to with Alpha, and we want to make sure we retain our background. With that in mind, let's launch the UI and start customizing this. Now we're going to keep the default extruded text object, but feel free to change it to anything you like. For me, I'm going to go in and change it to Continuum. Let's also tweak the tracking a bit and update the font to get something nice. Feel free to play around with the overall look and style to find something that works for you. When done, let's position our text at the base of our flames. Once that's completed, I want to update my texture, and this is why it's so important to use an extruded text object, because that's going to allow me to change my surface texture to pull in the video layer and create a glassy look. To do this, I'll open up my front material track and select the color track. Now this is going to bring me to the material attributes tab. Here, I'll be able to change the type from color to texture. When I do that, Title Studio is going to pull the texture from my V1 track or the video track I've applied Title Studio to. Now when I make that change, you can see that my text is a lot harder to see, mainly because the majority of the background is black. So we need to create some kind of backlighting to separate it from our background. To do this, let's head to the Drop Shadow tab and enable it. We'll want to change the color to something we can see, for example, a nice warm orange to match our flames. Let's pull back on the distance and increase the opacity and softness to create a nice glow. And while we're at it, let's change that angle so that the light is reflecting off the top left side of our text. Lastly, I'm going to select the scene container and head to the lights tab. Let's increase the ambient to max and bump up the intensity a bit. I can also reposition the light source so that the text is lit up a bit more to give me something that looks a bit like this. When I play that back, that's already starting to look pretty great. Okay, let's apply this back to Vegas, and we're going to want to start working on the particles. First, let's move our Title Studio clip to a new track, and place an empty event in between the two video tracks. Next, let's go to the Particles unit and drop Particle Illusion into the new empty event. When we generate our particles, we want them to composite over the flames, but behind the text itself. With that said, let's launch the FX browser and select Background Rising Embers, and apply that back to the clip. We'll want to do a couple of small tweaks here, so let's launch the Particle Illusion UI. First thing that we want to do is open up the Swirl Storm Sparks, and then look at the Properties group. Right now, the particles are emitting in a line from the bottom of the screen. Let's change the shape to Area, which will update the emitter on the stage. Now, because we applied this to an empty layer, we can't see the flames, but we do have a general idea of where they will be. So let's resize and position the area box so that it's roughly the width of our frames and adjust it so that most of the particles appear above where the fire should be. Now don't worry that we have these that are appearing below. Now we're going to do the same for the other instance of Swirl Storm Sparks until we have something that looks like this. With that done, let's go up to the Stage menu and enable Motion Blur. When satisfied, I'll hit Apply, and there you go. Okay, one last thing here will be to enable some glow on those particles. Let's go to the Composite menu and select Alpha Apply Mode. Then we'll select Normal for that Apply Mode. When we head down to the Glow group, I'll enable it, and you can see that we now have two options available, to apply to the composition or the particles. Let's select Particles. Next, let's bring up our intensity. Those particles are pretty small, so there's not a ton to work with, so I want to pull back on my Radius and Threshold to increase the sensitivity until we get something that looks like this. Okay, here's the thing. We want to apply BCC Reflection to this whole composition, including our background. Now one way to do that would be to simply drop BCC Reflection into a new video track above our clips, but because we're essentially reflecting two clips, and an instance of Title Studio, and a motion blurred instance of Particle Illusion, a much faster workflow would be to simply render out the Title Studio clip like I did here, and we'll drop Reflection directly onto that clip. Now when I do, the entire image is going to be mirrored which, just at its default, looks pretty cool. As with all Continuum effects, you have access to professionally designed presets in the FX browser. Simply select one, preview it, and apply it back to host to begin customizing. But as you can see, some presets display the reflection higher than the bottom of our effect. Let me show you from scratch what's going on here. 
Inside of our effect group, the first thing we see is the preview mode. This helpful option will generate a grid only, or a grid with the reflection effect, to better help us visualize the position of the reflection plane. This can come in very handy when manually adjusting reflections. Feel free to customize the color if green isn't your thing, but don't forget to turn it off when you go to render your effect. For our effect, the first thing I'm going to want to do is grab this widget here and adjust the position of the entire image, drag it up a little bit. This widget incidentally corresponds to the position XY value in the image plane subgroup. When adjusting the reflection plane itself, I can either use this widget here or manually adjust it in the reflection plane subgroup. Remember, I can always have that grid enabled to help me align the position. For this effect, I think I'll position my reflection just below the edge of the text, like so. Now in addition to its XY position, I can adjust its rotation along any axis. For example, if I adjust the rotate X parameter, I can swing the reflection plane forward a bit like this. And in the reflection style subgroup, I can adjust the softness and softness Y ratio to smooth things out, as well as adjusting the gradient fade start and length. Play around with these to create an effect that works for you. Personally, I like to bring the fade start all the way down and extend that length a bit. This more or less eliminates the gradient, allowing me to focus on my reflected text. One of the cooler features is the ripple subgroup, which will allow me to generate a noise pattern in the reflection. As I increase the amount, it's going to increase the intensity of my noise. This is a good way to create a nice watery look. Speed will adjust the evolution of the noise with lower values slowing it down. Let's bring it down by about half, and I can also adjust the X and Y scale as much as needed to stretch that noise pattern a bit. When I play that back, that's looking really great. Okay, let's finish this off with a little bit of stylization by dropping BCC Colorize Glow onto the clip. Rather than just dropping it onto the clip itself, I'm going to drag it onto the VFX panel and place it after BCC Reflection. Let's scroll down and change our color preset to red-yellow. Honestly, there's not much else that we need to do here, but before we finish up, let's bring down the softness a bit and increase our intensity just a little bit. And when I go to play that back, there you go! Feel free to experiment with the reflections, glows, and particles to create new looks that are unique to you. But as far as recreating these effects in Vegas Pro, that's all there is to it. I'm Vid Moriali, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care!